Welcome everyone to uh, Pact Now Connect. Um, my name is Matthew Lewis, my pronouns are he, him, his. So I'd like to introduce, uh, before we all go around, my co-facilitator for the evening. Um, I'll let you tell yourself. Well, I'm Naomi. I come from Children's Wisconsin. Um, I'm here, I've been a lover of this book, um, and this has really, within the last year, did a really change on me within the last year. So I'm excited to be here and to talk about it with you all. Awesome. Thank you. I um, want to talk a little bit about the title, because um, I think that was also one of the things that like makes me love the book so much. Um, I, Naomi, you and I talked about it a little bit yesterday. Um, do you want to start that? Like maybe uh, what we talked about, the, the two parts of realness and, and redefining? Um, yeah, because one of the big things about realness and redefining realness that a lot of people just jump to is thinking about passability. And it's so much deeper than that. It's, real, it's realizing that the being real within yourself and finding your own sense of womanhood and where you see yourself as a woman in this world. It talks about your own identity, how you just see yourself and what are you going to get from love and, and what are you looking for in love. So it's really talking about redefining the whole aspect of a person rather than just what we think, but as a trans person, we have been judged in so many different er areas that that usually be becomes the focus on passability and looks, going back into like, we talked about being in ballroom and when it comes to categories that's more focused on trans women, how more judgmental they are, see how passable you are. So they are check your neck to make sure they don't feel an Adam's apple. They rub the side of your face to make sure they don't feel any like trouble or anything on your face. And it just goes back to that. So that really resonated with me, like when I read the title and then looking at the title and going back and reading the book and seeing that that wasn't the aspect of it at, at most part. We did touch on it in the book, but it wasn't like the whole focus. Cause when you look at the title, you kind of really just think of, oh, how to be a passable trans woman. And that wasn't the case. So I really liked that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I, I love that, that it kind of knocks the judges panel, like they're not a part of it. It's like, sorry, I am. It's like, I'm, I feel like it was more like Janet holding a mirror, you know, and really yeah. doing self-examination instead of, you know. It gives me very much so like, hey, this is how I redefine my womanhood. This is me being the woman that I am rather than society telling you what it's supposed to, what Society has told us that trans women what we're supposed to be for the, forever. We're supposed to be the shadows. We're supposed to be in the background. We're supposed to be all these things. And I feel like with this book, she really took a piece of that and said, no, we're going to define ourselves and I'm going to define me. And this is what it means to be a real woman to me. Mm -hmm. I love that because it's also one of those big things, that, like I said before, with ballroom and how the categories for trans women are based and focused off how much they resemble cisgendered women. And I feel like this title really tackled that of us putting ourselves in a space of we're not on different platforms. This is what, as any woman can read this book and, and see themselves or see aspects of themselves and see like, hey, of taking over themselves and redefining who they are. And I feel like that title really like took people's mind and kind of twisted it a little bit because you probably thought it was about one thing and it's just basically letting you know, like we as trans women are on the same platform as a cisgender woman. And, and, and it being real or being passable or being all these different things has nothing to do with being at once. Absolutely. There's a clip I want to play where uh, Janet talks about the word passability. Um, and um, I'll play it first and then we'll, um, we can make sure I have it pulled up. I, don't wanna... I am a woman. I live my life as a woman and that's how I should be perceived. I'm not passing as anything, I'm being, being myself. I have such um, a complicated relationship with the concept of passing period, not even applying it to my own life, but just the idea that to pass means that you're Passing is something that you're not, right? Passing comes off as if you're 
you are actively, right, because it's a verb, you're actively engaging in, in some kind of trickery or deception. And so that's where I get irritated with passing because anytime that I walk on the street, my gender is visible. I am a woman. People see me and take me as a woman. And that is not passing, that's me just being. But once I disclose that I am trans, things change. And then I become an oddity, I become an object, something that is objectified and gawked over. And my humanity and womanhood is then checked and um, put into question. So I can just imagine someone who does not have the conditional privilege of passing, having to have to deal with that all the time. So those are the, the layered relationships with the lived experiences of being a woman that is often seen as cis. I love this um, pass, like the, the changing the ownership of the word, passing to like something that is put on um, trans folks and not something that is like sought for, you know, that it's um, this conditional opportunity afforded by like a cis normative expectation. Um, and that brought me to this quote that she talks about in the um, introduction. Um, and it's, um, being exceptional isn't revolutionary, it's lonely. It separates you from your community. Who are you really without community? Um, and, and I think um, Naomi and a couple of the folks that it, um, hit it on the head that, um, I think when this book came, up, came about, like the media really was like, ah, oh, Jan and Mock, Jan and Mock, the trans woman to talk to about all trans issues. And she was like, absolutely not, because no. Um, but I think that conditional privilege really play, uh, played a part in that. And I love that this book immediately is like, I don't want that. I don't claim that. Don't give that to me. Um, because I don't want to be separated from the people who like I actually belong to, um, to be gawked over um, and objectified. Um, any reactions to the clip as we were having the conversation about the title? Um, um, one thing I am, can y'all hear me? You can hear me. Okay. I'll be mute. A lot of times people think passability is safety, and it's not. Um, that's so. That's one big misconception about passability. And pass, like she stated, passability is one of those things that's basically saying that you're acting as if you are a sister to one, or you're acting as if. And that's not. That's not what none of us are trying to do. We are living our truths the way that we live them. I'm not acting as anything. And I, she has this one quote, the misconception of equating ease of life with passing must be dismantled in our culture. And one big thing about it is when you are in a passable state, a lot of times the danger switches. Because once you are exposed or someone exposes you without your permission, it becomes an entire different safety situation for you. Because a lot of times people feel like, oh, you didn't tell them or you were hiding things and stuff like that. So that the whole word passability has to be dismantled in so many different ways when it comes to the trans community. Because um, it's also a big word that separates us in the trans community. Um, so those two things from that clip, it really just, it, it, it just, it really resonated with me because we feel like, a lot of times people feel like once you get to a certain space, then you good, you good. You can just walk outside and you fine. You can just and it, and she like really put it into perspective of like this is not. There's a battle on both sides. So that really and it and it's the truth because once you even if you're in a passable state, that does not mean that you're safe. It does not mean that the, the conditions that you are under will change. Because once you are once if you say it in a conversation once you tell it and things like that you, that's the that's the whole thing you're introduced as this trans one not by your name you're not anything it's just your once they once trans is out there it's basically that's your identity i also like that um i think it's in the second chapter that um she also like really commits to kind of like rejecting the binary to be like wherever you fall on the spectrum of gender, like that is valid and that's your experience and like no one has the right to try to put you in a box. Like it's, and if that is consistently in flux, that is also okay. So I just, I just I really love her for the way she was like, let's, let's stop this at the beginning because we're not gonna, we're not gonna play this game. <laughs>